Yo, what's going on, shroomies and shroomettes? It's your boy, Easy Blue Thumb, and we are here. The very first video of the very first inoculation in the attempt to cultivate mushrooms. That is the goal, and we must achieve by any means. So, let's get to it, man. Since this is my very first time, I was looking for the most inexpensive way possible to try to grow some mushrooms. Because I'm cheap as hell, one, and I didn't want to waste my money or my time because after doing the research, I figured I'm going to have to do some waiting. So I found um, 90 Second Mycology's page and the technique that I'm using right here could be found on his page. He goes in depth with it. Um, to my knowledge, this is his creation. So everything that I'm doing here is pretty much what he shows on his video. So I want to thank you for that because that led me to this point today. So if you have no equipment, and we're doing this with the bare minimum. Uh, you want to at least turn off your AC at least an hour before. You don't want to be running back and forth. Make sure your fans are off. And you want to go ahead, spray some 70% iso alcohol on your surface, around it, above it, on the side of it. Clean all of it up. Wear a mask too, because I like to spray alcohol. I sprayed this whole bottle. So we're gonna start by just taping with our um, micropore tape, just so that once we have our holes on the bag, we don't have to go and reach for the tape. You can see it's a little sticky with the gloves. Uh, so we're just gonna put those on the side until we're ready for them. Now, start with a multi spore syringe again I sew your hands I sew everything shake your syringe up because the spore syringe has clumps in there you can see the clumps of spores inside the liquid solution so just shake it up pretty good since this is the first time ever using this needle and ever doing this, you don't need to sterilize your needle because it's fresh out the pack. I got OCD, so I move a lot. Don't mind me, we're getting into it. So wipe down your bags. These bags are already wiped down. You want to inject 0.5 to 0.7 cc of your multi-spore inside the bag. Now, what I did, I picked a spot on the bag that I can actually know that's where I'm going every single time because I got lost once and then I just had to keep taping and taping. Um, so make sure you just pick a spot and always hit that spot so you know exactly where you're looking for you know exactly where your holes at after you get it in there you put your micropore tape on it and that one is good to go put it on the side and we start the next one so grab the next one you grab your paper towel, spray some 70% ISO. Now, the reason why we use 70 and not 90 is because 90 evaporates too fast and it won't clean up the bacteria that may be on your package. 
So you can see I don't even have a torch. This is how bare minimum we're starting. So you can use a lighter. It doesn't matter as long as the needle gets red and you can see like some of it spurting out as it's being evaporated. You just want to sterilize it again. Well, sterilize it for the first time because it's a fresh one. Let it cool down a second. Find your spot where you want to inject. And get to it. Now we're going to do the same. Inject your 0.5 to 0.7. And honestly, I couldn't even see what I was injecting because the company that I got the syringe from taped it at the top. So I couldn't even read the first two CCs. So I just put whatever amount I felt in my hand was enough. Tape it up, put it to the side and I start the next one. Now, same process for the next one. Just going to speed it up. Um, there does start to have a black soot that accumulates on your needle. Um, that's fine. You could go ahead and use that. You don't have to wipe it down or anything. It's sterile. It's just soot. It's okay. It's all sterile. And there we go. Going to clean up again a little bit. I love that ISO. You know what I'm saying? Going to cap up our needle. You don't want to inject yourself when you turn into a big old shroomy i mean hey that might not be so bad but we're gonna put it up cap it up and that one is done all right all right so with that cap that put your syringe over to the side we are now going to start the fresh air exchange holes or the gas exchange holes. Remember, mushrooms breathe just like us. So they're going to need fresh oxygen for the carbon dioxide that they produce, right? So that's what we're gonna do. You wanna start again, get your micropore tape, set yourself up, man. Do not set yourself up for failure. Be prepared when you're doing this, okay? You want to move with, uh, how do they say? Move with authority, move with action, move swift. That's how you want to move. You don't want to create too much air. So you don't want to keep going back and forth, back and forth. Set yourself up, do your process, and you'll be good. So I'm just gonna prepare these bags before I do anything. Okay, so you wanna pinch the corner of the bags so that way you create like a little space in between them, in between the two layers. And you want to take your needle, clean your hands, ISO, ISO, clean your hands, um, grab your, your needle that you're going to use to make your gas exchange holes. And you want to clean the area where you're going to put your gas exchange holes sanitize your needle i love that iso <laughs> i love that iso don't judge me i'm trying to grow mushrooms everyone says use iso i will use it okay you want to sterilize your needle bong bong let it get red let it cool down. And inject. 
I don't even think I let this one cool down. Nah, okay, yeah, I did. I know one of them I didn't. Here we go, you want to kind of... Yeah, that's my first time, so I was a little rough. That first hole was a little rough, I ain't gonna lie. It took me a little longer than I thought to make it. Okay, you want to tape that up with your micro pour. And give it like a give it some give it some uh some space like make the hole big give it don't be cheap let them things breathe <laughs> you know what I'm saying same with the other side pinch it a little bit separate the layers sterilize your needle let it cool down make a gas exchange tape it back up. And you're gonna do this process, of course, the same for your other two bags. Um, what I did when I did when I made the gas exchange for my other bags, I tried to make each one a little different, so that way I can see if I have different results with more exchange or less exchange, you know. So try to experiment a little bit too. But on 90 seconds page, he said, well, he has a video that he's using a hole punch and a video of you cutting the corner of the bag. So, you know, however you want to go about it, but I chose this way. This way seemed the easiest for me. And um, just do the same process for the other two bags. Um, just to be transparent, I also, two days later, I also inoculated another three Uncle Ben's rice bags because I just felt like I would need more, you know, and to have testing variables too. I'm a testing variable type of guy and I just wanted to have as much as possible so that way I could test to see what I did wrong, what I didn't do wrong, you know, do what works for you. I'm just saying this is my process. This is my journey from start to finish so i'm just being transparent and honest so we are back exactly two weeks later you know i couldn't wait oh man i couldn't wait but you gotta be patient i ain't got patience so we're gonna do the break and shake but before that of course you want to turn off the air all circulating fans Clean your workstation, 70% ISO, get your containers, clean your containers just because I'm, I'm weird like that. Um, this is the bin from the very first inoculation. Um, so this was done on 4-10, April 10th is when I first inoculated this. This date is now April 24th and I'm going to show you. Oh man, look at this. Look at that. That's beautiful right there. Let's go, baby. Come on, man. We got one. All right. So what you want to do is you want to block your air exchange holes. So that way you don't get any rice or anything caught in them. And you want to squish and mix. Not technically break and shake. You're just squishing and mixing it up as best as possible. I'm not going to lie. This was difficult. <laughs> For the first time doing it. Trying to get those gas exchanged. Maybe I should have moved them up a little bit. And I will do in future videos, just a little bit higher, but overall, just keep your thumb or however you could do it, two fingers, four fingers, just seal that top part and try to mix everything down under it.
so we're going to go ahead and just keep mixing this up as best as possible you want your mycelium to touch as many grains as possible so that way it can colonize faster and you see i got that little corner down at the bottom it needs a little bit more mixing so we're going to push that up and try to squish it on to the other grains you know what i'm saying and make sure your air exchange is clear and there we go bag one i saw them hands i saw them hands let's see bag number two is looking like oh yeah baby that's nice right there that's nice let's go baby all right same thing hold that see i got my thumb right under the holes this bag right here was nice too it was nice and and, and chunky and you can see how it's breaking up it's, it was really chunky just break that up you get a good forearm workout with this too just letting you guys know so if you're not ready for it you'll find out I'm just going to go ahead and do this same process over for this bag as well. All right, now we're going to move on to bag number three. What we got, what we got. Oh, look at that. All three bags. Success. So far. So far. Success. That's that 410. That's that. That's the first bag that we inoculated. And this bag is feeling pretty nice. A little chunky at the top two and top corner. It's really nice. So just go ahead and break this up as well. Same process, same process. All right, all right. There we go. Three bags down, nice and mixed up. Now we let these sit for another two weeks, three weeks, however long they need to sit, they will sit and you will be patient. You will not be a degenerate and check the cabinets every five minutes like myself. Just be patient. Let the mycelium work and it'll do its thing. Okay, so we're just going to clean this bin up, pack them away, and we are going to mix up the next three bags that I inoculated two days after my first inoculation. Okay. So 410 and 412. These are the 410 bags, 412 bags. Next up. Okay, so these are the bags that I inoculated on April 12th, two days after my first inoculation. And we're gonna see what we got. Okay, okay, not so bad, not so bad for two days behind. Not bad at all. You know what? I'm going to go ahead because I'm impatient. We're going to break it up. <laughs> We're going to break it up. I'm impatient. I can't wait. I want to grow some mushrooms. And you do too. So we're going to break it up prematurely. And hope for the best. Alright, so I'm going to just quickly uh, fast forward through it. And I'll show you the mycelium growth that I have. With these bags being two days apart. Just so you can get an idea of how quickly the mycelium network works. So let's get to it. Bag number two. Okay, all right. That one looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and mix this baby up.
Bag number three. Okay. Ah, that one was about like the size of maybe a quarter, a little bit larger, not half dollar. Hopefully it was enough for that mycelium to hit some different grains. Get a little faster colonization. Okay, so once you're ready to pack this up, just clean it up again and let these babies sit. So the beauty of this is I'm actually going out of town for a few weeks. So we'll just let these babies cook do their thing and hopefully when we get back we'll have some nice mycelium blocks and we'll be able to send it to bulk that is the goal all right all right we are back shroomies 513 33 days later from the first initial multi-sport syringe inoculation of this Uncle Ben's 92nd brown rice. Let's go. Your boy is itching to open up this thing and see what we got. I just want to note that since I am using this container to store my Ben's brown rice bags in, I'm going to clean it out because I'm also going to be using this to colonize my substrate that I have here. So I just want to note that if you don't have a clean container for it, make sure you clean it out with your 70 ISO ISO ISO. Okay, so make sure you ISO down the scissors, everything. And we're about to cut this baby open. See what surprise we may have in store. So for time's sake, I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to clear out all of the uncolonized grain that were in the bags, which was a lot. Um, I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, scraped as much of the uncolonized grain off, put the cakes inside the bin, and we are going to add our CVG substrate. And just for anyone wondering how long you can let your substrate sit if it's purchased by you know other sources this bag sat for about a month and a half well yeah it sat for longer month and a half and i just kept it in uh i kept it in the box in the closet you know regular room temperature so if anyone is wondering how long because i was i was a little nervous i didn't know if it was like a 48 hour deal you know i just didn't know so this one right here, these two bags um, were about a month, month and a half, a little less. All right, so we're about to get to it. About to send this baby to bulk from multi-spore syringe using Uncle Ben's 92nd rice bag tech Courtesy of 92nd Mycology. Thank you very much. And we're going to add this in. I'm going to use half. I'm going to use one pound for this shoe box. This is a six quart shoe box. And I'm going to use the other pound for the other six quart shoe box that I have. Because now that I see what the grain broken down looks like.
it's a lot less than what I was expecting to have. So we're just going to go ahead and mix this up. Mix it up good because you don't want any uncolonized green, which I might have some in there, to uh, be in there because that's going to cause mold. And then you're going to get all types of fun stuff growing that ain't fun stuff. So we're going to go ahead and mix that. Alright, bet. So we got this level pretty much. Just light, lightly tapping it down. I'm going to go ahead and apply a thin layer of substrate as a pseudo casing layer. Now they call it pseudo because it's not uh, conventional, I'm guessing, with the cocoa core. So I have this right here. I'm going to use this. Because like I said, we're going to try the most inexpensive way and see if it works. These bags were actually not that expensive, if you were wondering. I don't remember off head. So we're going to go ahead and apply that, pat that down. We're going to go ahead and spray some 70 on this napkin and wipe down the edges of your shoe box. Get all that dirt off of it. So we could put our lid on and hopefully we can get this 90 second rice bag that we injected with our multi-sport syringe to colonize this substrate. That is the goal. Like I said before, man, we're going to get these mushies one way or another. Do not forget to clean your lid before you cap it. Just want to say that because I almost forgot. We're just going to cap it and we're going to let it sit. And hopefully we get some mycelium growth in that substrate. Oh, almost forgot to give you a 360 view of what it looks like all mixed up. This is tub number one. Pretty well, pretty well. All right, we're gonna set up for number two. Okay, same process. Um, I think that these bags were way better than the bags that were inoculated the first time because of one reason when i was sleep when i slept on it i felt that i could have used just a little bit more um of the multi-spore syringe because like i said i couldn't really see so i just tapped it and then that was it i didn't know if i injected the proper amount but i just took my time with this one a little bit more i think and that's why we were able to get better results on this bag. 
So I'm gonna go ahead now and add the rest of the substrate into this beautiful mixture of mycelium and uh, Uncle Ben's brown rice. I'm gonna try to hold on to some of that grain so I can use my pseudo casing. All right. So you just wanna mix this up really well. On this six quart shoebox that I have, it has this crevice area along the inside. So you just wanna make sure you get inside those crevices and mix that up really well because I didn't do that so much on this uh, second shoe box that we're preparing. Okay, so just make sure you get inside those crevices because you really don't want um, your grain to just be sitting in the corner. You want it touching some substrate. You want it on there. You want it all mixing and mingling, all right? So let's clean this up and let's set this one uh, to colonize. Okay, I want to show you real quick because uh, I ran out of substrate for that. So that top is not fully colonized. And like I said right here, that bottom piece um, crevice around six o'clock is not mixed in well with the substrate. So we're going to have to seriously keep an eye on this bin, I'm guessing, but we're going to label it anyways. And we're going to set this up to colonize and hopefully we get some mushroom. It'll be nice to have some mushrooms on the first run. You know, that'll be a huge success, a good feeling, but if not, we'll just try again. I have uh, another bag of substrate and the store is right around the corner. Get some more Uncle Ben's, no problem. So we're gonna label this up. We're gonna pack this up and we're just gonna check back in maybe a week or so. And let's see what we got. Okay, okay, hey, so if you made it to the end, I really appreciate you, I sincerely do. It means a lot. I put a lot of effort into this being my first video. I wanted to leave a good impression and I want to thank the rookie mycologist because his videos and his blueprint was exactly what I followed for this video because like I said, I wanted to make a great first impression or at least try my best at making a good impression, you know. You know. So salute to Rookie Mycologist, salute to 92nd Mycology, and salute to everyone else out there that's making content about these beautiful mushrooms that we all love. You are greatly appreciated, and thank you. And I appreciate you guys. I'm out, shroomies. Peace. EasyBlueThumb.com is up and running. Let's go. We have hoodies, t-shirts, slides. Go cop your granny one. Get her a mug too while you're at it. I appreciate the love and support. I appreciate y'all for rocking with your boy. Y'all be easy. Peace.